So much has been made recently uh, of the fact that Trump is absolutely flailing. Um, you can tell that he knows he's losing and he's getting desperate. He's panicking. He's sounding more unhinged than ever, which is kind of wild, especially because after the assassination attempt, he went through a period for like four or five days where he um, genuinely seemed, you could see it in his face that like he was shaken by the whole thing and he said, oh, I'm going to throw out my RNC speech and I'm going to rewrite it and I'm going to make unity a big part of this, right? And there was this brief moment where he was like, I'm going to be the calm guy. I'm going to be the uniter. I'm going to be the person who runs an old school political campaign. Remember the Obama thing? There's not red states and blue states. There's just the United States of America. It, and he was trying to lean into that for a split second because he, and I was probably surprised by this. I would have thought that, look, if there's an assassination attempt on him, if anything, he'll ramp up the uh, extreme paranoia, he'll ramp up the tyrannical tendencies, right? And for a brief moment, it was the opposite. But then I told you guys, eventually he's going to revert to homeostasis for Donald Trump. And that's exactly what he did. And now, if anything, he's more unhinged than ever. So he does a rally the other day. Again, he's seen the polls. I'm sure he saw that poll that had Kamala up eight points nationally. I'm sure he's seen the fact that he's now down in the average of the polls at the national level. I'm sure he's seen the swing state polls where she's leading in a whole bunch of swing states now and even dead tied in North Carolina, which was supposed to be a relatively safe Republican state. Okay, so he does his uh, his rally. I'm going to show you some of these moments. These are incredibly telling. Let's start with this one here. We're going to get Joe Biden out of the White House. What's he doing now? Greg, what's he doing? You know, he wanted to debate. If we didn't have a debate, he'd still be there. Can you imagine if we didn't have a debate? Why the hell did I debate him? Oh, that was such... Look, that's that's an honest moment from Trump there. That's an honest moment. He's like, I shouldn't have debated him because he collapsed on stage in front of everybody. Clearly, he lost like multiple steps. And the White House was able to hide Biden's cognitive decline for a long time, but you couldn't hide it in the debate. And since I agreed to debate him, and more importantly, he agreed to debate him early in the process. Like, he agreed to debate him early enough where if Biden fumbled massively, they were able to make the old switcheroo, and that's exactly what happened. He could have waited till after the DNC, after Biden had secured the nomination, and then debated him, but he didn't. He agreed to an early debate. What a colossal mistake. Uh, misstep, I should say. End mistake. Colossal misstep. I mean, because he's right. If he didn't do that, Biden would still be in there. And he'd still be up four points nationally and up in every single swing state like he was. He knows. And by the way, what's embedded in this answer? He knows Kamala's beating him now. He knows. He can sense it. He can feel it. Okay. All right. We're just getting started. I got a lot of clips from this. Here we go. Think of the things I just said that he said, you know, I think J.D. Vance is weird. You know, it's a word that they use. I think he calls me that too. No, we're not. We're very solid people. We want to have strong borders. We want to have good elections. We want to have low interest rates. We want to be able to buy a house. We want great education. We want strong borders. He said I think that we're right. very, actually, I think we're the opposite of weird. They're weird. You know what they do? They, give, they work with the press on coming up with a soundbite, just a soundbite. And every station that night, all the networks, CBS, and ABC, NBC, they all said, oh, they were called weird, weird. They, it's just, it's unbelievable. You know, it's not a word that's really used too much in politics, but it's a terrible thing that they can do this. It's just a soundbite. No, J.D. Vance is a great patriot. Oh, it's great. Oh, I love it so much. Weird? Why, nobody's ever called me that before. I don't know why anybody would call us weird. We're not weird. We're actually the opposite of weird. If anything, they're weird. And they work with the press. And it's totally unfair. It's amazing that they're allowed to do this. They shouldn't be allowed to. You don't hear this word in politics very much. Oh, my God. It has, it has struck the most sensitive nerve in their bodies. This has struck that. Now he, he literally takes time and rouses back. Weird. I'm not weird. I don't know what you mean. Weird. I've never heard they're weird. We're not weird. Can you believe that they're allowed to do this? Only further proving the point that you're weird. To respond in this way is super fucking weird. Oh my God. Oh, it's brilliant. Oh, by the way, this is one of the reasons why Kamala picked Tim Waltz, right? She saw that messaging and how much it caught on and she was like, this guy's fucking good, bro. Turns out he is good. All right, but we got more. So now we get to the flat out lies portion of the speech here. Let's watch. And I'd like to congratulate the young woman who transitioned uh, from a man into a boxer. You saw he won. She won the gold medal. 
How about the young Italian, beautiful Italian boxer? She got in there and she didn't know what was going on and she was a very good boxer, you know, against other women. She didn't count on this. And he's up here, boom, one little jab, whoa. She goes, nobody ever hit me that way. Then he goes, boom, and she said, okay, I had enough. It's crazy what they're doing. And this person won the gold medal. Did they win the gold medal today? What do you think of that, Tim? I don't think Tim, I don't think Tim was. Uh, Greg, no good, right? No, how crazy is it? How crazy is it? For four more years, crazy, and she wants it. She wants men to play in women's sports. So he's talking about the Algerian boxer at the Olympics, which of course, I shouldn't even need to say this, but I do, because we live in hell. Kamala has nothing to do with any of that. Tim Waltz has nothing to do with any of that. And furthermore, Trump is just lying here. This is just a flat out lie. By the way, Amani Khalif, the boxer, is now apparently waging a bunch of lawsuits for defamation because of the shit that conservative blowhards were saying repeatedly. They kept saying she's a man. They kept saying she's trans. That is not true. Not true at all. It is illegal to be trans in Algeria. She was born and raised in Algeria. She's from Algeria. You know what she has? Sorry to be crass about this, but she has a pussy. She has a vagina. Now you have this discredited boxing organization, uh, the IBA, International Boxing Association, I think that's what it stands for, and they came out and said, she has XY chromosomes. Really? Show the evidence. They haven't shown any evidence. They haven't shown any evidence. Now, why are they saying that? Well, it turns out th this is a corrupt boxing organization with ties to organized crime, and it's run by this weird Russian guy who saw Amani Khalif beat a Russian boxer, and so they axed her from the organization and claimed, oh, she failed these tests, these unspecified tests. Well, the Olympics, first of all, they had already said this organization is not a legit organization. And furthermore, they said, Amani Khalif passed all the tests that she needs in order to fight in this. She was born and raised a girl. Have you seen the pictures of her as a little girl? She is 100% a girl. Now, the claim that they fall back on is, oh, but, you know, she, we think maybe she has XY chromosomes, even though we don't know, right? Well, again, what I would say to these conservatives is this. If you were in the delivery room when Imani Khalif was born and she has a vagina, what would you say she is? What would you say she is? I think we all know the answer to that. But now they're moving the goalposts. They're so obsessed with hating trans people that they see trans people where there aren't trans people. Right? And they just get to the point where they're fucking lying repeatedly. Now, it's possible she potentially has uh, DSD and she has uh, like elevated levels of hormones potentially above the, the range which is uh, standard for women. But if that's the case, if you want to have a separate conversation about what should the rules and regulations be and maybe should we regulate the top level of testosterone that these athletes have, that's a more reasonable conversation. But they're not having that conversation. They are just fucking lying about her. They are lying about her over and over and over, and that's why she's going to sue these people for defamation, and she's probably going to win a shitload of money. Because they dragged her name through the mud based on absolutely nothing. And they lie about it. And they try to link Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz to it. It's fucking pathetic. It's disgusting. This is what we call a square peg round hole situation. They're trying to jam the square peg into the round hole and make this about trans people and link it to Kamala and Tim Waltz and there's fucking nothing there. But guys, this is how you know they have dick. No pun intended. This is how you know they have nothing. Is because they can't talk about the actual policy issues. He can't talk about the economy. He can't talk about foreign policy. He can't talk about anything serious. Because he knows on that front, Kamala and Tim Waltz are going to run fucking circles around him. So it's, I don't know, you want to see men beat up women? Even though this, uh, this isn't a man, and they're not trans, and it's illegal to be trans in Algeria, and she has a vagina, and she's born and raised a woman? I can't. I can't deal with these people. All right. I got more. I got more. Tim Waltz is the man who's uh, very freakish. He's very freakish. If Comrade Waltz and Comrade Harris win this November... Comrade Waltz and Comrade Harris... But he calls them freakish. You know what's freakish to me, Don? Uh, coming out and saying we should ban all pornography. We should outright ban pornography. That's J.D. Vance's position. He said it to a Catholic magazine in 2021. You know what else is freakish? Uh, banning abortion. Not only banning abortion, but also making it so that it's illegal for somebody to leave a red state and go to a blue state to get reproductive health care. That's freakish. 
You know whose position that is? Tim Waltz. Or excuse me, not Tim Waltz. <laughs> Never would be Tim Waltz. J.D. Vance's position. That's freakish to me. Comrade Waltz. Again, this, they're far left, they're extreme, they're communist. Comrade Waltz. All they have is their little fucking buzzwords and their labels that they throw out because there's no substance, but I haven't even gotten to the best part yet. Ready for it? Here we go. People cheering will be the pink-haired Marxists, the looters, the perverts, the flag burners, Hamas supporters, drug dealers, gun grabbers, and human traffickers. But with a Trump fans victory, the cheers will come from the police officers, the fire... Oh my God. Let me hear that one more time. Listen to the, the list of people that he says will be cheering if um, Tim Waltz and Kamala Harris win. Listen. Cheering will be the pink-haired Marxists, the looters, the perverts, the flag burners, Hamas supporters, drug dealers, gun grabbers, and human traffickers. I'm, try I'm trying to write them all down. Hold on. <laughs> Hamas supporters. Wait. Drug dealers, wait, gun wait. the looters, the perverts, the flag burners, Hamas supporters, drug dealers, gun grabbers, and human traffickers. But with a Trump fans victory, the cheers will come from the police officers. Oh my God. Okay. I, I think I was able to get all of them. So who will be happy if Kamala and Tim Waltz wins? Pink-haired Marxists. Looters, perverts, flag burners, Hamas supporters, drug dealers, gun grabbers, human traffickers. Where do I begin? You are friends with Jeffrey Epstein. You were on his plane multiple times. You're on the record talking about how, you know, Jeffrey, he likes him beautiful and he likes him young, that Jeffrey Epstein. You said about uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, I wish her well, when she was on trial. Why wouldn't you have harsh words for her? Why are you uh, trying to be nice to her? I don't know. Maybe is it because she might have some damaging information about the times you were with fucking Jeffrey Epstein? Steve Bannon very famously came out and said, this is in 2015 and 2016. Oh, uh, you know who really could like destroy this whole Trump thing? Jeffrey Epstein. So we hope he stays quiet. How many? He's been charged with like dozens of times. He's been charged with like sexual assault or sexual harassment. And this guy's like the human traffickers. They would like it. The human traffickers would like it if Tim Waltz and Kamala Harris win. Pink hair. They're still pink haired Marxists. That's some shit from like 2015, the anti social justice warrior craze thing. And the idea was like, oh, these social justice warriors are really authoritarian. This is coming from a guy who tried to overthrow the last election. He tried to do a coup. He did an insurrection. He's calling other people authoritarian. The pink hair Marxists. Looters and perverts. Looters, you mean like the people on January 6th that you defend to this day and say you want to give a pardon to? Perverts. Have you heard of pedocon theory? You know how many. How many uh, very famous Republican politicians or evangelical Christian fundamentalist preachers, you know how many of them have been brought down on charges of, uh, you know, sexually assaulting kids? And these are people that make up your fucking base. He attacks flag burners. Flag burning is protected by the First Amendment. It's free speech. It's free speech. Real patriotism is understanding that you live in a country that allows you to burn the flag to express political disapproval. Real patriotism is not lock up the people who are doing a symbolic protest and burning a flag. And then, of course, he couldn't help himself. And he said the Hamas supporters will love it. The Hamas supporters. Anybody who's pro-Palestine is considered a Hamas supporter, according to this fucking idiot. Anybody. They smeared all of these college protesters as Hamas supporters when their perspective was, we are anti-war, we are anti-genocide. Please stop carpet bombing toddlers. That was their position, and they were smeared as being Hamas supporters. And I love he attacks drug dealers. Yeah, because Trump's position, and he said it repeatedly, is we should uh, we should kill drug dealers. They should get the death penalty. You know that uh, civilized, intelligent position. I, so, I, he, he's not capable of thinking these fucking things through. He's not capable of thinking them through. Kill the drug dealers, Jesus Christ! And uh, of course, he says gun grabbers too. He considers Tim Waltz a gun grabber, even though he's pro Second Amendment. He hunts all the time, um, but. He thinks, hey, red red flag laws and universal background checks, that's probably a good idea just so we make sure we keep the weapons out of the hands of absolute psychopaths who want to shoot up schools. To Trump, that's, you know, oh my God, you're a gun grabber. All right, anyway, I'm still not at the worst part, man. I got way too many of these videos. This is him just losing his mind. Trump loses his mind for a second here. Listen. Kamala Harris. You know, it's interesting. Nobody really knows her last name. If you ask people, do you know what her last name is? Nobody has any idea what it is. Harris. It's like Harris. I don't know how the hell did this happen. Normally, I fancy myself a good Trump decoder. Sometimes he says something very Trumpy, and other people are like, well, what the fuck is he saying? I'm like, okay, what he means is, if you try to get yourself in his mind, the argument he's trying to make is X, Y, and Z. 
In this instance, I got fucking nothing. What's wrong with her last name? Like, what are you talking about? Listen again. Kamala Harris. You know, it's interesting. Nobody really knows her last name. If you ask people, do you know what her last name is? Nobody has any idea what it is. Harris. It's like Harris. I don't know. How the hell did this happen? He's losing it. He's losing it, man. And now you don't have Biden to contrast with Trump where Biden can like barely get through a conference, a press conference and he's stumbling and he's bumbling and he's cutting himself off and he loses his train of thought and he, it's, it's a mess, right? Now you don't have that comparison. You have somebody who has all of their mental capabilities and you have Trump. And now it's just under the spotlight and everybody can see it. Okay. And then finally, here's, here's the last one. This one is the darkest one to me. I don't see many people talking about this, but they should be. But they should be, because we've really crossed the line here. Listen to this. It was a great Doug Mills Pulitzer Prize. Even though he works for the New York Times, that's okay. He works for the New York Times, and that's one of the only Pulitzer Prizes that was actually earned. How they, get, they got this woman, Maggot Hagerman. Did you ever hear of it? Maggot Hag Ehrman. She's a reporter. She pretends like she knows more about Trump. I have nothing to do. If the woman speaks to me once in a year, today I called her, I said, your stories are all fake. Why don't you stop it? But think of it. They have a man here who I really like. He's a great, he's a great photographer. Doug, it's nice to have you. Make me look nice and thin if you don't mind. So there's a journalist by the name of Maggie Haberman who sometimes writes uh, stories critical of Trump. And his nickname for her is Maggot Hagerman. Maggot Hagerman. Guys, look. Back in 2015 and 16, when he comes up with low energy Jeb, he comes up with uh, Little Marco, Lion Ted, you know, I loved sloppy Steve Bannon when he had a brief fight with him in like 2017 or 18 or whatever the fuck it was. Even Sleepy Joe, Crooked Hillary. Those names, usually they landed. Usually he would land on something that sort of viscerally gets a reaction and makes people laugh and say, hey, yeah, that's kind of true. Ted Cruz is line 10. Little Marco, he really is little, right? Low energy Jeb, yeah, he's kind of awkward, low energy, right? This stuff landed. This is like disturbing. Nothing about that is fun and cute and interesting and potent. It's just fucking dark and mean-spirited. Maggot Hagerman? My God, he's lost more than one step. He's lost multiple steps. This was, wow, wow. I've never seen him down this bad, man. I've never, there's not a hint of correct strategy or intelligent moves coming from him in his campaign. It is fail after fail after fail. He senses, he feels the vibes on the other side are tremendous. And he simply doesn't know how to deal with that. And he's melting down. Now, I understand the way Trump plays this game, right? The way Trump plays this game is, let me get the focus back on me, and I will get the focus back on me by creating controversy. That's what he does. But when it just comes across as dark and disturbing and desperate and panicked and tired at this late date. Man, the, the trend of this race is the quickest reversal I've ever seen in my life. And deep down, Trump knows it, which is why he's saying shit like this now. He's never been this low. And I think even his own supporters kind of recognize that. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.